Does it take you forever to finish a book? Do you forget most of what you read? Or perhaps you haven't even opened a book in years? Hey brainwashed friends, I'm Aaron Tupaz of Positively Brainwashed, and I've been trying to read a book a day for over a year. And today, I'm going to teach you 12 speed reading tips, as well as how to absorb information from books more effectively, and then explain why I think everyone should read books. So let's begin. The first tip is that you need to pre-read. Read the title, the back of the book, the table of contents, and then take a moment to try to predict what the book will be about. Then think of an end goal, and ask yourself what do you hope to get from this book and why are you reading it in the first place. This will prime and ready your brain to better absorb information. The second tip is to avoid sub-vocalization. That means don't talk or utter the word silently. This will slow you down as you'll only be able to read as fast as your internal voice. Now the average person reads only from 200 to 250 words per minute. However, we can think much faster than that. Also, if you have trouble with this, then try biting your knuckles or lips or try chewing gum. But remember, a picture is worth a thousand words. So when you read a word like communication, think of an image or meaning without the sound or language element. The next tip is to use a pen or a finger to guide you. This prevents visual regression, which is when your eyes move back and forth, bouncing all over the page, and this wastes a lot of time. And it does it so fast that you won't realize you're doing it. In addition, if you want to train your eyes to move even faster, then simply move your pen or finger faster. Just keep in mind that your reading speed will always be ahead of your comprehension speed, so it's okay if you don't understand everything you read, especially when you're practicing these tips. With time, just like exercise, you'll be able to comprehend more. Just remember to push yourself, because if you want to learn to read at 400 words per minute, then consider moving your fingers at 600 to 800 words per minute or faster. Also, since most people cannot read as fast as they think, their brains sometimes wander elsewhere to get its stimulant. So if you have trouble focusing, it might be because you're reading too slowly. The fourth tip is that you don't need to read every word. In most cases, you can understand the meaning of a sentence ignoring a and the of and all the small stuff. For example, I fastest reader in world is the only words I need to understand the sentence. Also, you need to learn to cluster words. Just like we don't consciously read every word letter per letter because we've seen them countless number of times, you should do the same for groups of words, like Statue of Liberty. The fifth tip is to use your peripheral vision. To do this, don't focus your gaze at the first word or the last word of each line. If you do so, you're wasting a lot of your peripherals reading just a blank margin. Instead, start from the second word and go until the second last. When you get comfortable with this, then you can even keep going and going by starting and ending closer to the center. The next tip is to read the first and last sentence of a paragraph first, then zoom through the middle. The first sentence often tells you what it's about and the last often summarizes it. It's kind of like pre-reading from tip number one. You just need to let go of always reading things in order. The seventh tip is on how to prevent boredom and to remember more. To do so, simply connect what you're reading to something you're interested in. Also, read with your five senses. If you watch my video on how to memorize anything, you'll get a better idea on how to retain information better by using your imagination and creating strong associations. I know this is an oversimplification of your brain, but you want to read using not only the language and logic part of your brain, but your creative and spatial parts as well. This can also help you avoid sub-vocalizing. Next is how to be able to remember more by simply applying, sharing, or teaching what you read as soon as possible. As much as I love to share knowledge, one of the reasons I make these videos is for myself. I also take every opportunity I can to annoy my friends with what I have learned from books and mentors. Yep. I'm one of those people. The ninth tip is to listen to classical music. Now I don't know the exact science behind this, but there's research that shows that this type of music helps with reading. Now it doesn't work for everyone, but the only way to know is by trying it yourself. Next is to listen to audibles. This can increase your productivity as you can do boring chores and tasks and learn at the same time. Or sometimes your eyes just hurt from too much reading. And it can be a great alternative if you have a reading disability like dyslexia. The 11th tip is to read summaries or watch book summaries from my channel or any others whose style you like. Now I still recommend you buy the books if you can afford it, so you can take notes on it and to support the writer. For the last tip, I'm going to teach you speed skimming or smart reading. Most books only have a few golden nuggets, so I want you to become a gold miner because there's a lot of dirt out there. 
Authors of nonfiction know that they won't be able to sell you a book for $20 if it was just 5 to 10 pages long, so they'll often just fill it up with a lot of repetitive fluff and stories. So to do this, first read the cover, the back, and the jacket if there's one which can trigger your authority bias so you'll respect the author. Then read the first chapter or intro. Then read the last chapter. Then go back to the table of contents and ask yourself, what do you want to get out of this book and pick a chapter or two. Once you've chosen, read these two chapters thoroughly. Then if you still have time, you can read the first paragraph of every chapter or just other chapters you're still interested in. And if you still have time after that, then you can skim through the book again, focusing mostly on the first two to three lines of each paragraph and the headlines. Think of books like people. You don't need to know every person's life story the first time you meet them, or ever. You can just ask about the most important things going on in their lives or what matters to you at the moment. And like people, if you really like a book, you can always go back to it and learn more at a later time. So let go of the need to always have to finish a book. I would rather invest in someone who's obtained a golden nugget from 30 good books than someone who's mastered two books word for word. Lastly, why should you read books? While there's a lot of evidence that many people who have risen above the pack read a lot of books and had mentors that were years or decades ahead of them in experience. Now for the most part, there's nothing wrong with learning from our own mistakes, but Richard Dawkins talks about in his book, The Selfish Gene, the problem with trial and error. Trials can cost a lot of time and energy, and errors can be deadly. One of the reasons the human brain probably evolved this big is due to our ability to simulate others and predict the future. If I see you touch fire and get burnt, I don't need to do the same. Sir Isaac Newton said he saw further than others because he stood on the shoulders of giants. So like Newton, take advantage of the knowledge of others and use it as your foundation. Now the problem with mentors is that they're often busy, live too far away, or they're already dead. But the great news is that there's millions of books that exist to learn from. Now as much as volume of books can be great, I also recommend that over time that you create your top 100 book list. These are books that give you the most value that you should be coming back to more than once. But remember, books are not powerful because they are books. They're powerful because the more you learn, the more you earn. And reading the right books can also help you improve your health, your relationships with others, and your overall happiness. Now I created a list of my top 100 favorite books that you can find in my descriptions below. But I want to know in the comments, what's your top 3 favorite books? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then choose one of the following. You can either A, subscribe and like, B, listen to the share bear over there and show that you care, C, watch my latest video, or D, hope something bad happens.